Hello everyone out there and welcome to Cthulhu Chronicles. This is a new mobile game which is a text-based adventure of the Call of Cthulhu stories. Let's get into it. The motor coach is late. Maybe it's your police training or maybe it's your nerves. But whatever the reason, you can't help but think about all the things that might have happened to delay the driver so badly. A motor accident, maybe, that left them lying in a ditch somewhere. Or a bar fight last night that went too far. Or maybe they've been robbed and left stranded in the countryside with no livelihood or mode of transportation. Much like you are now, it's probably the nerves. You take a deep breath and remind yourself of why you're doing all of this in the first place. You spent your whole life worrying about taking, worrying about and taking care of other people. And it's gotten you nowhere. Well, not nowhere, but Foxhead is about as close as it gets. It's time to stop worrying about things you have no control over and start living for yourself. As if on cue, a long gray motor coach rattles to a stop in front of you. The man who steps out is slightly sallow skinned. He's in his 40s, maybe 43 or 44, and is dressed in a stained shirt with the bus company's emblem. Even as he turns towards you, he is rolling a cigarette between his yellowed fingers. His attitude is casual, almost as if bored with, with his surroundings. But his eyes are sharp with their dark sockets. Where to? he asks, and pulls out a matchbox. Show him your ticket. The driver looks over your ticket with a flinty, flinty gaze, then pulls back and nods. Luggage racks in the back, he says, and climbs back into the bus. He slides behind the wheel and flicks his cigarette out the window. The coach's engine coughs to life. You hurry to store your luggage and settle into one of the empty seats. With mixed emotions, you watch from the window as the tired avenues of the small town slip behind you, receding into the distance. Just a few days travel, and you'll be making... A fresh start in Arkham. The coach putters through the countryside. At first, the interior is stifling and your stomach lurches with every bend in the road. But the driver soon opens his window by switching seats. You find a spot where the breeze hits your face. You slowly relax into the journey, observing the quaint little hamlets that the coach serves as they pass by. You have just begun to doze when the driver's desperate yell awakens you. Try to keep your balance. Okay, so this is where you have to spin to uh, increase your skill. So we're gonna, it's medium difficulty, we're gonna spin. Hopefully, by chance, successful. Yes. The driver spins the wheel to avoid a parked tractor, plunging, into, plunging the motor coach off the road. You're thrown sideways and towards the aisle. You grab a hold of the seat in front, just in time to prevent a painful fall. The coach stops with a thump. You look out the window and see a Fordson tractor stopped in the road. Your driver leaps out of the cab, unleashing a string of curses at the phone. Catch your breath. The driver climbs back into the cab, grumbling about the tractor parked in the road. Sorry, he says. All them fields, and he has to pick the road to park. You're right. The question is asked casually, and the driver doesn't wait for an answer before starting the coach up again. He backs the coach up a little and threads it around the tractor, glaring at the farmer. You resume your journey. The driver takes the curves with more caution than before. He glances over his shoulder at you a couple of times. Sorry about the four, he says. That fellow is dumber than a hog. I'm Silas. The accident was at least as much Silas's fault as the farmer's, but it doesn't seem to shrewd to it doesn't doesn't seem shrewd to antagonize the man while he's driving you through the middle of nowhere. The coach turns onto a narrow road, which weaves uphill through the woodland. Silence becomes chatty. Going to Arkham, eh? 
can't say I've ever heard of the place. Went to Boston once. Didn't like it. Too much hustle and bustle. You got family there? And a special someone waiting? The afternoon is wearing on. You see no harm in confiding in Silas about your new life. No kidding, Silas said. A black lady police officer. Imagine that. Oh yeah, I picked the black lady police officer. <laughs> um... He doesn't seem to have much more to say on the matter, considering the tone he just used. You think that might be a good thing? The motor coach rattles on through the hills, and Silas lapses into silence. The sky darkens behind you, pinks tinting the clouds, and the sun descends. Finally, a welcome sight comes into view, a settlement on the crest of, hi of a hill. You can tell from the first glance that it's not that it isn't a sippy, the first planned stop on this leg of your journey, but perhaps you can persuade Silas to make a stop anyway. Minutes later, a harsh stuttering from the engine interrupts your reverie. Silas frowns and rattles the gear stick. The motor coach falters in its ascent. Silas utters a curse you don't recognize and grinds his teeth, struggling at the wheel. You, s you seem to inch up the hill until you reach the first building's low dwellings constructed from rough red stone. Silas wrestles the coach into a small bay off the road and makes for the engine compartment. Disembark. Silas scowls down at the engine, wiping his hands on a rag. Ain't sure what's wrong. Might be the oil pressure. Might be something knocked off kilter when we took that spill. Can't do much into the engine crews neither. When with the light falling, I reckon we'll be here through the night. Silas gestures to the buildings around you. This here's Emberhead, miles from any place. I only come through twice a week. The folks here are good people. May Led better keep the spare room. She'll look after you. Up that alley, turn right, first house on the left. He scratches his cheek and looks again into the engine compartment and spits on the ground. Meet me back here at eight in the morning, and we'll see how we stand. Consider the situation. All right, another uh, skill for intelligence. Normal. All right, shouldn't be too hard to get this. Awesome. The grinding noises you heard could, of course, indicate engine trouble. But they, see, they also seem consistent with bad gear selection and incorrect clutching. It seems highly unlikely that an experienced coach driver would suddenly get this wrong, even after a long day's drive. If this is a ruse to make you spend your time and money in a local shop, Silas would be disappointed with your purchasing power. Uh, let's just go to hers. You drag your cases between the sullen buildings. You feel surprisingly weary, considering you spent all day sitting down. Silas's directions lead you to a modest dwelling with a slate roof. A nameplate reads Leadbetter, and underneath the sign, in neat copper plate, proclaims Lodging Room. The lane around you is gloomy, gloomy, but a lamp flickers in the window. Hopefully, this May Leadbetter will take you in. You'd rather not begin your new life by sleeping in the street. Knock on the door. After a moment, you hear footsteps inside the house. A bolt is drawn back and the wooden door swings open. A figure with pinned dark hair and a well-worn house dress appears to you. Her gaze takes you into your traveling suit and your cases. Her voice has a slight Irish lilt. Hello. Should I take it to the you looking for a week for the night? Ask about her rights. Oh, you find me very reasonable, she says. You look tired. I may. Come inside, and we'll talk over a cup of tea. The Ledbetter house feels cramped with low ceiling and simple fittings, but is well kept, and a cheerful fire crackles in the grate. The aroma of the tea is soothing, and the cup warms your fingers. Have you come to Emberhead for the festival? Asked May. Explain your situation. May shakes her head, and you glimpse at a you glimpse a moment of deep seated anger in her green eyes. He always drives too fast. Thinks he thinks the road is made for him and him alone. 
He hit a mare like some years back. That was a terrible thing. You should have seen the state of the coach. You'd be surprised at the damage done. You're not sure you would be surprised after today's near miss, but May's expression is far away. With living here, though, we can't afford to antagonize the man, May says. He's about the only link we have to the world at large. He's not a bad soul at heart. I suppose that going the same route for 15 years makes a man careless. <laughs> you have to forgive him. May goes silent for a long moment, then her eyes flick back to you. But you, don't, you didn't come here to listen to me, brother. You must be hungry. I can rustle you up a bit of stew. How would that be? The room may lead you to a small, but comfortable, and the stew offers a dark. The stew she offers is dark and hearty. After dinner, you have a couple of hours before your usual bedtime. Um, keep chatting. May talks about life in Emberhead. In her letters, my sister always asks if I'm bo if I'm not bored living in such a small place. She lives in New York. She, uh, then she writes about how frightened she is to walk home at night, I ask you. You mention in your hopes for a new life in Arkham. May doesn't seem to hear you. It's a small place here, yes. But that means we have real community. Everybody faces, everybody's face is known. Everybody works together. Nobody is excluded. Except those who choose to exclude themselves, of course. I couldn't live anywhere else now. Put her at ease. Okay. Success. As the hour wears on, May's upbeat manner descends into something more reflective. It's not always easy. I am a widow, you know. We have little money, and although I... Wait. Although I know we'll never starve as long as we live here. But I don't see myself for marrying again. I know every man in the village. I know him too well. You see what I mean. Her mouth twists briefly, then she yawns. Oh, listen to me rambling the night away. Time for me to turn in. As you head to your room, you hear a clunk behind you. You look over your shoulder, but all you can see is a wooden door securely closed. May, toots. The young lady of the house. She'll have been listening to us, Ruth. Come meet our guest. <laughs> Ruth, come meet our guest. Uh, there's a short pause and the door creaks open. Two wide eyes peer at you from a gap between tousled hair and the rough nightgown. Say hello. Her eyes blink. Pleased to meet you. The door closes again. My dad's a roof. May says, pride evidence in her voice. Or pride evident in her voice. Ten years this summer. She's a delight in the torment all in one. Don't worry. She sleeps with me. She'll not disturb you. Good night now. You retire to your room. The silence outside is strange after living in a town for so long. But you soon drop off. Alright. Um. Oh, you can't. Dang it. You can't close it. You will abandon your adventure. So. I'm going to go ahead and leave this video here if you would like more, um, I guess like and subscribe and let me know in the comments and we'll be back with it.